Hey guys, my name is Amelia Hood. I'm the director of Watershed. And let me just start off by asking some questions. How do we know God? How do we know that, that God is real? How do we know that God really cares about me? How do we know that God cares about the things that I care about, about the people that I care about? How do I know that God sees me? And if he does see me, why doesn't he do something about the chaos around me? Why doesn't he right the wrongs? Why doesn't he uh, defeat the evil? Why doesn't he bring about real peace? If you've never asked these questions before, I have no doubt that in 2020, you've asked some version of these questions. I mean, COVID has, has shut our world down. You can't turn on the news without seeing the latest shooting. You, you've got family members who've lost jobs or we've lost loved ones. Things are, are chaotic. We're back in school, but for many of us, we're still online. And, and masks are the new fashion statement of the year. Things are, are crazy. And, and 2020 is forcing us to ask questions. It's forcing us to wrestle with some form of these questions, right? And, and in the midst of the wrestling, God can seem very far away. But what his word tells us is that God does see us, that, do, that God does care for us. And, and it may be hard to believe, but the reason it's so hard to believe is, is because we can't help but think in the present tense. We can't look past today. But we have to remember that God isn't writing a story uh, uh, that, that's temporary. He's not writing a story about today. His story is eternal. He's writing our eternal story. It's not about temporary happiness, but eternal joy. But Romans 8 tells us this, that God's story is greater than the stories that this world writes, is greater than the story about COVID, is greater than the story about the shootings we see on the news. It's even greater than stories about murder hornets. God's story is so much better because it does not fit our box of expectations. And, and we'll find this as we're reading Romans 8, that as followers, uh, we're called to more than just obedience. We're called to more than just a series of, of good works. God calls us to know Him. He calls us to become more like Him. He calls us to become His children. His calling is greater than anything we could have ever hoped for and his love goes beyond because his love is greater than anything we could ever fathom. His love overwhelms our needs. He, he gives uh, those who follow him a hope that reaches past the suffering that we see every day because he promises us eternity. Let me ask you another question. Do, do you know why everything seems so messed up? Do you know why everything in the world, everything around us, everything inside of us seems so messed up? Well, the answer is sin. Sin, this, this thing that we are all born with. Sin, this thing that is dragging us down, this thing that is killing us. Paul writes in, in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death. I'm not talking about simply the physical death, but an eternal, forever death. But then he finishes the verse by saying, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. But sin distracts us from God. Like I said, it is dragging us down and, and without us even knowing it, realizing it, it is killing us. But through Jesus, we get life. For those who've been called, for those whom he has died for, you get eternal life. For those who, who live for Jesus, for those who, who proclaim with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we are called to a greater calling. We are called to live beyond. So what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, to get those answers, we're going to dive in to Romans 8. And, and today we're going to spend our time in, in verses 1 through 11. And, and let me just read the first eight verses of this chapter. It says this beginning in, in verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those verses that I just read and some verses I'm going to read in a little bit, we can get two points. And the first one is this, that a calling that goes beyond frees us. A calling that goes beyond frees us. You see, the, the key verse in, in the ones that I read is 8-1. Because the other verses I read, 2-8, through eight, are essentially explaining what that first verse says. But the bottom line is this. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. What, what that means is that for those who are in Christ, we aren't sentenced to eternal death. We aren't sentenced to eternal punishment. For those who are in Christ, instead we are freed because Jesus took our place. For us who are unrighteous because of our sin, God now sees us as righteousness because of His Son's righteousness imputed in us. So let me explain it this way with an illustration. I'm going to bring a ladder right here. And what this ladder represents is, is a relationship with God. You see, what we try to do because of, of sin, what we try to do is we try to work our way towards heaven. We, we begin to trick ourselves. We begin to deceive ourselves that there is something that we can do to have a relationship with God. But anytime we try to take that step, nothing happens. And the reason is we are shackled the, the weight of sin is so heavy, it, it separates us. It doesn't allow us to get to God because God is perfect, because God is good. We can't get there because of sin. But God loves you so much, and He knows that there is nothing we can do. So He did it all. And He sends His Son, Jesus, to climb down this letter this ladder, to put skin on, to live amongst us, to die for us, to, to be resurrected so that we can be resurrected with Him. Why? So that we can have that relationship with God that not only God desires, but I believe that we desire. A calling that goes beyond frees us. And it's Jesus who breaks the shackles of sin. It's through Jesus we have a relationship with God. And the second point is this. A calling that goes beyond empowers us. A calling that goes beyond empowers us. How? It empowers us through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Let me read what it says in verses 9 through 11 of chapter 8. It says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. You see, he's no longer talking to those who don't believe. Now he's talking to you, the believer, you who proclaim Jesus. He's talking to you. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So let me conclude by saying this. Because of Christ's righteousness imputed in you through an act of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, you are empowered 
you are empowered. You are no longer dead in your trespasses, but alive in Christ. And because you are alive, you can walk with him. You can live for him. You've been given not only Christ's righteousness, but his authority. His authority to die more and more to sin. His authority to live more like Jesus. With Christ's righteousness in us, we become more Christ-like. We live more like him every day. So you, if you are a believer in Christ, you are called to something greater. You are called to live beyond. You are free. You are empowered. And because you are free and empowered, you can live in such a way that leaves people asking questions. You can live in such a way that draws people in. You can live in such a way that is so bold that you are willing to invite people, not just to church, not just to watershed, not just to a breakfast club or a community club, but you can invite people to Jesus himself so that Jesus can do what he did for you, so that Jesus can, can be uh, lived in them, so that he can impute his righteousness, so that they in turn can live for him as well, so that he can free them from the shackles of sin, so that he can empower them. You can be Jesus to others because you can live beyond your calling. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for everything. Thank you that despite our sin, despite the fact that we are not worthy to be with you, you love us so much that you sent your son down to die for us so that we may live with you in eternity. Thank you that you free us from sin. Thank you that you empower us through your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you desire a relationship with us and then in turn desire to use us to bring people to you. Jesus, we love you. Amen.